I may now turn to my special guest, David Strawn, the editor of The Last Oil Shock, a survival guide to the imminent extinction of Petroleum Man, an absolutely outstanding title, beautiful designed cover, and produced by a very uh, prestigious publishing house, uh, Murray, which is uh, a subsidiary of one of the top publishers in the uh, country. John Murray, The Last Oil Shock Publishing, David Strawn, the author. Now, David, you had a piece in The Guardian this morning, which many viewers will already have seen, so they'll have a taste of the thesis of this book, which I would summarize as being that the oil will reach its peak in the next decade, and that the Iraq war, therefore, was very definitively about securing a hold on the last big oil fields, which are perhaps not as big as you implied today, uh, as uh, some of the holders of them were claiming that they were. In other words, time's running out for petroleum man and for the oil economy. Is that a fair summary? I think so, yeah, absolutely. I couldn't have put it better, better myself. Um, it's, you uh, can hire me. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just cheap, I'm free. <laughs> no, it's very good. I mean, I, I think that the, the uh, you know, the, the Iraq war was not just all about oil. I think a lot of people think that, but I think when they say all about oil, they, I think they tend to think about oil companies and profits. And I don't think it was, I think it was about something much more important than profit, and it's a physical shortage of oil. And I think that the, the neocons and, uh, and Bush and Cheney particularly, and I think Tony Blair, were all aware of this, of these developments that were coming up very shortly, and that was a, a, a really significant factor in the, in the decision to go to war, and that, that is basically the thesis. Oil, Israel, and the demonstration of overwhelming American power in the Middle East for the discouragement of Les Autres, that's uh, my thesis. I've never said it was oil alone. But your book and your article today seem to imply that uh, you can no longer wriggle out of the idea that oil played a part in it. Iraq, perhaps the biggest oil field in the world, certainly the biggest Middle Eastern supplier uh, with significant fields as yet untapped. That's, a, that's absolutely right. I mean, that was well known before, before the invasion, of course. Iraq was in a peculiar position. It, you know, it's got the third largest oil reserves in the world, according to the official figures, and you're right to, to call those into doubt. But so it's got the, anyway, officially the third largest reserves, yet before the war, of course, it was, uh, it was under sanctions, and that meant that the, the oil industry could only produce something less than two million barrels a day, or that's what it was producing. Uh, had there been no sanctions um, and were there peace, uh, you could imagine that those sorts of reserves would produce perhaps three times that much, much on a daily basis, so perhaps six million barrels a day. Um, now, uh, of course, you can't do that with the sanctions there, and as far as uh, Tony Blair and George Bush are concerned, you can't lift the sanctions with Saddam there, so therefore Saddam had to go. I mean, that's, that's the logic as I see it. Mm. The, uh, uh, it's maybe beyond the purview of the book, but one of my takes on the Sudan situation is that much of the Western hostility towards the government in Khartoum is underlain by the fact that Sudan has an ocean of oil underneath its soil, and even worse, it's contracted it to China already. Well, I think that's 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 I think that that last part is is is, is where I'd agree with you. I mean, I think there's this this there's a growing hostility between particularly America and China uh, about who gets the remains of the of the oil. Um, you know, China is going around the world um, doing what the, the the Americans object to, which is is locking up entire fields and entire countries with deals, mm. which they object to very strongly. Um, and, and, and I'd point to Iran in that in that connection as well. I mean, the the, the Chinese and the Iranians did a, a massive deal not so long ago about $70 billion deal for LNG and, and, and oil supplies covering about the next 25 years. And, um, you know, as, as somebody who testified to an American, uh, American committee, in fact, I, no, I'm, I don't mean you, I'm, somebody else did, and uh, um, uh, not quite such a testy uh, uh, um, uh, confrontation, uh, an American oil expert said, you know, every, every uh, barrel of oil that goes to China is one less for America. And mm. I think they are now behaving as if really this is a zero-sum game, and that's, that's, that's where we're headed. Well, uh, Donald Rumsfeld did say in terms, not exactly, but it's not a distorted uh, inference. He did say it's not America's fault that God put America's oil under other people's countries. Well, yes, uh, no, I mean, that does, does appear to be the attitude. I mean, you know, how did our oil get there? Yes, <laughs> and of course, uh, I was going to ask you that, but you've touched on it already. The same logic that underpinned the need to be in control of Iraq if uh, oil at the right price and at the right flow was going to be maintained 
and priced in dollars rather than in euros, uh, must underpin the part, uh, partly underpin the confrontation with Iran. Uh, absolutely. I, you know, I, I, I think that's exactly it. I mean, I, I'm not sure that's in, entirely the, the entire story, no, but, but, no. But, but indeed, I mean, it's... Iran has the second largest uh, reserves in the world, and, and you know, if, if, the, if the nuclear conflict goes wrong, or if the uh, US-Iran uh, conflict goes wrong, you know, that's a lot of oil, not simply in the long term, but in the short term. I mean, the, it's, I think it's a, it's a mistake to see Iran as powerless in this conflict, any, anything but. Um, mm. it, it's, it's um, I mean, the oil supply situation is so tight now that the two and a half million barrels a day that Iran supplies to the world are absolutely, absolutely critical. So if it is attacked, I think the first thing that Iran will do is, is to is cut turn it, it off. Yes, exactly, yes. indeed. So that's well, presumably Cheney was uh, touring the Gulf to try and ensure that in the short term at least, Gulf production and Saudi production would, uh, would dramatically rise to make up for that eventuality. Well, that, it would be a forlorn hope because the, the spare capacity that Saudi has, I mean, the, there are very there are varying different estimates of, of how much spare capacity there is in the, in the total global oil system and most of it's in Saudi Arabia and most of it's very heavy and sour oil uh, and the problem with that is that we don't have the refineries the upgrading capacity to deal with that so it's it's the wrong kind of oil and uh, so uh, we may find actually what well if that were to happen if I Iran were to cut off its supplies then we would find I think pretty quickly um, exactly how relevant that alleged spare capacity is and it might be that it's very much smaller than the three three million well, barrels a day that's supposed. I'll give you the benefit of personal conversations I've had with uh, with both Iranian uh, and Venezuelan sources who know what they're talking about uh, and the first is that if Iran is attacked it will not just turn off its own oil it will try to make sure that its neighbors aren't producing either in other words they will follow a scorched earth policy in the Arabian Gulf from which the attack on Iran undoubtedly either by land, sea or air uh, will have been launched and places like Qatar for example, uh, Bahrain, the eastern provinces of Saudi Arabia, uh, all well within range of Iranian striking power would be struck and therefore the capacity to up their production would be severely limited militarily but also when I was in Venezuela recently I can tell you that the Venezuelans uh, agreed with Ahmadinejad when he was there that if Iran was attacked, Venezuela would switch off its oil production too. Yes. Certainly its supplies to the United States. And so we could, in the and by the way, just to alarm the viewers still more, the Sunday papers in Tel Aviv were full of feverish speculation that a war is imminent. Uh, the chief of the defense staff uh, named five adversaries, Al-Qaeda, Hamas, uh, Syria, Iran, and Hezbollah, uh, which are coming into a critical mass, they say, of confrontation with Israel. And perhaps in July, in other words, in a couple of weeks, uh, this will erupt in fighting on one, two, three, four, or all five fronts. So the idea that Iran is to be attacked, at one time fanciful and thought to be bluff, at least so far as the Israeli media is concerned, is now a real prospect. Uh, well, I, I think the... the it it's hard to imagine, although perhaps with recent history, perhaps perhaps not so hard. But you know, it's hard to imagine an American administration being quite so stupid as to do it now, particularly given where we are in Iraq. But but I've always thought that that uh, the amount of control that uh, America has over over uh, Israel is questionable, and actually that that's where the that that's where the the, the, the trouble might start. Mm -hmm. And if anything, if that scenario that you're you're painting were to to come about, well, or even if it were to look as if it were imminent. Um, I don't think there's really any, any particular ceiling on the oil price. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 the oil market is a terribly volatile thing in any event, and a small shortage leads to a very, you know, a disproportionate rise in the price, and the, the, the reverse is also true, but, but that's what you'd be worrying about. And, uh, you know, even two million bar barrels a day taken off the market um, in, in a very tight market is, is, is pretty catastrophic. If it were a, a, a wider confl conflagration like the one you talk about, then you know all bets are off. I think you know we could be talking several hundred dollars a barrel, and of course the economic impacts of that would be would be catastrophic. We've been well, a very we'll deep come, recession. Come on to that in a second, but I, I, I'm